Uh, this is Two Echo Zero Bravo Mike Tango returning. Hi YouTube, my name's Ben, I'm 2 Echo Zero, Bravo, Mike Tango, and I'm here to tell you about my HF setup, a problem that I've had with my antenna, and how I managed to resolve the problem. So a few weeks ago, I purchased a second-hand ICOM 7300 from eBay. Frustratingly, it got damaged in the post, so I had to send it back, it was repaired, and then finally I got to play with it. In the meanwhile, I purchased an end-fed antenna. This was from Sigma Eurocom, a UK firm that makes N-fed antennas and unons, and I purchased their LW20, which I guess stands for Long Wire 20. It's about 20 metres long, and it's an N-fed long wire. It's made of fantastic braided wire with a good shielding on the outside and a high-quality unun that boasts a 9 to 1 and goes from 80 metres right up to 6 metres with a power capacity of 400 watts. So it's future-proof as well. When I get my full licence, I can continue using it regardless of the power output that I'm able to do here in the UK. However, it says that it needs an external antenna tuning unit, ATU, or I think more accurately, an antenna matching unit, because a long wire N-fed is deliberately an unbalanced antenna. It's not meant to be resonant on any frequency. And because it's not resonant on any frequency, it's tunable just about to all frequencies if you have a good tuner. Well, the ICOM 7300 has a built-in tuner that can tune an SWR of 3 to 1 uh, back into tune. And uh, in the emergency mode on it, it will even pull in 10 to 1. So although I don't have an external tuning unit, I thought I should probably be able to get this to tune up. As long as it's 10 to 1 SWR or less, it should probably tune up on all bands. And uh, so I plugged it in and experimented. However, I had a problem. Sometimes it would tune absolutely fine on a frequency and then two minutes later have a sky-high SWR. It would then fail to tune again on that frequency and then have a very low SWR again. It was almost like the SWR was fluctuating in a massive way and I couldn't quite work out what was going on. So I had a problem. There was obviously a problem. It could have been a problem with my brand new ICOM 7300. After all, it was damaged in the post and therefore may well have had a problem in it. It could have been a problem with the coax connecting from the back of the 7300 to the unun. It could have been a problem with the unun or it could have been a problem with the long wire itself. Well, I decided to start with the easy things and go through what I could. So I tested the wire, made sure there was no breaks in the wire, simply with an ammeter to test both ends of the wire at the same time and found that there was no problem with that. Next, I swapped out the coax for a different coax in case there was a dry shoulder joint or some sort of problem with the coax itself but again, I was having exactly the same problem. So I worked out it's either a problem with my radio or a problem with the unun. So the first thing that I thought about was, is this wire in the best position? As you can see here, I've got my UHF VHF white stick, which is a Diamond X200 on the roof. It's a couple of meters above the line of the roof. And before I erected it, I put on a pulley system with a bit of paracord so that I'm able to pull up any wire that I want. I sometimes pull up my G5RV or a random wire or a dipole to make an inverted V. But in this case, I've pulled up the end fed wire. Now there is a danger there. There's a lot of iron work up there to hold the antenna up and the pole that it's on is also made of metal and I know that running an antenna too close to a pole can create a very strange SWR because essentially the metal becomes part of the antenna if it's too close to the antenna. So I came up with a device that would sort of off stand the wire by about a meter and a half away from the house so that it wasn't touching the metal anymore. Um, when I put this up, I tested it again, it had absolutely no impact. Next up, I decided to run some radials from the UN. And as you can see here, I've got radial wires all along the floor, well over half a wavelength of radial wire laid out on the floor, thinking perhaps a better grounding system would help. But again, it made absolutely no difference. A friend noticed that the wire was touching a tree branch and wondered whether the tree might be the issue. So we had the tree removed and out of the way and 
guess what? Absolutely no change. Therefore, the issue must have been something to do with either the radio or the unun. So uh, next up, I tried to test the unun. Now, a nine to one unun, obviously an unun is, is for an unbalanced feeder to an unbalanced um, antenna, hence un-un rather than bal-un, not balanced to unbalanced, but unbalanced to unbalanced. With an unun, they're wired in a very strange way, which means that they short out uh, from the outer coax to the inner core of the coax it's being fed with. So it's normal that, that you should have a short circuit in them. I've got one here, and if you test between the centre pin and the outside, it's normal that you've got a short there, but that short only happens after it's gone round nine times. And then on the top, of course, you've got two pins, one for the antenna and one for a counterpoise. So it, I, I thought it was unlikely that a brand new unun from eBay would be the problem. So decided the problem must be with my radio. So after much deliberation, I contacted the seller and went back again and tried to get it fixed again. But before I did that, I thought, hang on a sec, why don't I just try it with my FT817 that does have an external tuning unit. And what I found there was exactly the same problem. It would tune perfectly fine one minute and then the next minute the SWR was well over infinity. And so I knew that there must be a problem somewhere else. It wasn't my radio after all. So I borrowed one of these. I'm part of a community that meets on GB3SA, that's a local repeat to me, and one of my friends on there, Steve, who I know is a subscriber to this channel and has pretty much taught me everything I know. He's Mike Zero November Mike Helfer. He lent me some equipment and in that equipment was this. And then we went into lockdown, so I've managed to keep it ever since. So Steve, sorry, I will return it at some point once we're allowed to meet up again. This is a Sark 100 SWR analyzer. It's really easy and simple to use. It has a built-in battery and also a power adapter on the bottom and you simply plug in your coax into there and you can change the band you can even change the exact frequency to see what your SWR is on any given frequency and this is what I found so as you can see here I set something up starting with a dummy load which Steve lent to me on one end of my contraption I put that dummy load through a little barrel connector and into a PL259 to banana clips terminal and from there ran a very short length of speaker wire that I had left over from my speaker wire dipole and that went to either side of the 9 to 1 unun. So one bit from the positive to the antenna and from the negative to the counterpoise and then coming out of the unun I had the short length, the short pigtail that Steve had lent me with a PL259 on either side, just a good bit of coax, but more importantly, a bit of coax that Steve had tested and found to be working absolutely perfectly. And then that went into the SWR analyzer. And as you can see from the SWR analyzer, it won't have a good SWR because it's not designed to have with the un and on there, but the SWR should be pretty static, flat and constant. But as you can see here, it starts with a reasonably good SWR of about two and a half to one, which is perfectly tunable using the internal tuning unit of the ICOM 7300. But then it fluctuates, it jumps up to seven or nine, and then eventually over infinity and then back down again. This explains why the antenna tuning unit was able to tune perfectly well and then without changing anything, have a sky high SWR. There's something amiss here. Interestingly, if I do the exact same experiment again, but with a different unun, again, Mike Zero November Mike Alpha lent me this unun to test, then I was able to get a very static and flat SWR. It's still quite a high SWR, but you would expect that with the unun. And so I'm then able to draw that in using an antenna tuning unit. So then I found out the problem must be with the unun itself. So I opened up the unun that I got from Sigma Euro.com and found it to be neat. It was well put together. It was wired correctly. It was spaced correctly. There was no problems, but there must have been a problem because it obviously wasn't working. And then I noticed it. To create a waterproof seal where the little screw threads went out of the box, they'd melted some hot glue on there. And the hot glue had melted a wire 
and it was having there was a gap so it wasn't testing as as a connection but it was obviously close enough that it was creating a capacitor it was an air spaced capacitor and therefore there was some charge that was building up in the coil of wire and then discharging across the air gap between these two wires where that hot glue had melted it the solution well i simply wrapped a bit of insulation wire back around the wire and now the Unun works absolutely fine. I've tested it a few times. I've managed to get a few thousand miles around the globe on it, and I'm really, really impressed with it. But it just goes to show not everything you buy off the internet is always working perfectly well. You need to be ready to experiment, to try and work it out. I could have just sent it back, and the seller on eBay was very, very helpful and kind. Said, oh, just send it back, I'll replace it. But there's something about the hobby that wants to try and get to the heart of what's going on here and work it out. And of course, I've learnt quite a lot along the way. Well, having mended it, I recommend to you the Sigma Eurocom LW20. It's a good antenna, and although the Unun came faulty, the seller on eBay was very, very willing to replace it, but frankly, I was happier to mend it myself. It set me back just over £50, and it's a really high-quality braided wire, so I hope you enjoy uh, getting that. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed this experiment as I've tried to work out the problem with my Unun and then fixed it. If you want to subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this, do click the subscribe button at the bottom. And until next time, I'm Ben, I'm 2 Echo Zero, Bravo, Mike Tango, off and clear. 7-3. Uh, this is 2 Echo Zero, Bravo, Mike Tango, returning.